Um, let's at least see what Chapter 2 is going to have in store for us, for sure. Second stage, as it were. Who is it? Dennis? What the fuck? What are you doing Who the here? fuck is Dennis? Like Dennis the Menace? <laughs> the way that that's animated is silly as hell. Oh my Damn, god. I thought I was a goner for sure. He's flailing around like a fucking ragdoll. We were in primary school together. It must be three years. What do you think you're doing entering a lady's residence through a window? I have to give you something. Ah, here it is. Unzips his pants. Oh, wait. It's the key to my grandfather's room. Mother always has this key with her. What are you doing with it? You saw her. When and where? Calm down, calm down. It was yesterday morning, and your mother. What is this animation? <laughs> it's insane. Back from boarding school, and asked me to hand that key to you if she wasn't back in time. She must have known I'd disobey her and come back here. She must have gone up to meet me. We just missed each other. Hey, Alyssa, you've really changed since I last saw you. I'm going to go and check my grandfather's room. Hey. Well. It looks like you've grown up too, Dennis. Oh, come on. That was then and this is now. Wait a minute, would you? What is this animation? He's going insane. He's just shaking all around. <laughs> Sorry. I wasn't expecting... <sighs> the name of the key. It's Dick's Room Key. <laughs> I'm so mature. Ah, uh, we got Richard's room key, yo. Apparently, it's, his grandpa's name was Dick. Grandpa Dick. That animation for him, that dude, moving all around, was absolutely insane. Like, he's just all over the place while they're just talking normally. Like, they're having a normal conversation. The conversation flow was fine, right? Like, there was nothing wrong with that. But the animation for that entire scene was absolutely batshit insane. What the fuck were they doing? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's all I can say. What the fuck? Ay, ay, ay. All right, I'm not going to lie. Curiosity has the better of me right now. Let's see what's up with Grandpa's room. Let's go check out Grampy's room. Oh, Grampy. Grandpapa. Grandpapa. I forgot where his room was at, though. Map. Consult it. <coughs> uh, wow. Um, this looks like I never looked in any rooms. Are rooms different now? Like, what the hell? His room was through here, I think. I think his room was this room right here. Hell yeah. Use the dick room key? You got it. Welcome to the dick room. It's full of flaccid paraphernalia. All these bold books. What was he studying? That is a lot of fucking books. Let's just say that. Encyclopedia Britannica from every year ever made. These masks are unnerving. Yeah, no fucking shit. Looks like a mask used to hang there. Oh boy. What are all these old books? Mm, I don't know. Grandfather. A picture of Grandfather in Grandfather's room. This isn't even his fucking room. This is a damn study. He didn't stay in here. Anyway, I guess we'll just read the shiny because that's all there is. There's a scribbled note. The keys to the mystery of time lie behind you. What could that mean? There are some old books to one side. The Book of Entities 1. Entities have existed in the human realm since Roman days. These beings have been known to possess innocent humans, imbuing them with utter ruthlessness and cruelty, and often driving the possessed to vicious acts of murder. In such cases, executing the murderer does not break the circle of evil. The possessed is resurrected to continue its bloodthirsty mission. 
Those who are thus controlled by entities are known as subordinates. When a subordinate kills a human, they take nourishment from the victim's soul and their power grows. Subordinates may acquire an infinite amount of power in this manner. It follows then that the subordinates are sustained by human misery and suffering. Only certain humans are equipped to fight entities and their subordinates, the rooters. Rooters, who are always young women in their teens, have been battling against these shadowy enemies for hundreds of years. Their war is likely to continue for many centuries to come. Well, alrighty then. We learned some things about entities and subordinates and rooters. Spooty badooters. Rooters? Teenage girls who stand against the forces of darkness? That's me! What, did you find anything in there, Alyssa? What's that? Your shirt in my skirt match. Entity? What's an entity? And the ruders? So it wasn't a dream. I'm going to look for my mother. You want to look for your mother? But she was in a car, remember? She could be anywhere by now. She's nearby. I can tell. What do you mean? It doesn't matter. Just go home. Let me help you. Just the two of us. It'll be like the old days. That was a long time ago. Well, I might as well help you. There's, there's nothing to do at home. I'm alone in the house until my sister comes back anyway. You mean Linda? Isn't she traveling? Yeah. She's working as a nurse at a refugee camp in Africa. In her last letter, she said she won't be back for at least another six months, so I'm free to babysit, walk dogs, look for missing mothers. Okay. You can check upstairs while I look downstairs. Yes, boss. Hey, one more thing. Isn't it your birthday tomorrow? Huh? My birthday? See, even after all this time, I still remember. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Now check upstairs, will you? You can count on me, partner. Partner. All right, good old Western boy. Okay, well... The keys are behind you. That's what the note said. The keys to the mystery of time lie behind you. Oh. An order form from the camera shop. Somebody bought lots of film. Cool. That drawer is locked. Okay. So I have a locked key, or drawer, rather. Locked drawer. Uh, stop with the camera, bro. I'm trying to interact with things, please. Thank you. The key lock drawer. There's a mask missing from the wall. And we have a clue about the keys being behind you. I wonder if some of the other rooms are different now. I guess we're going to go exploring. Okay, so that one's still locked. Noted. Noted. The fact that we told what's his face to go upstairs, I already forgot his name. Was his name Philip? Was that his name? Philip? Philip McGroin? This wasn't locked before. Who could have locked it? Damn it. Now we have another locked door. I'm going to make a save. Like, anytime we get through a scene, it's worth not having to watch or deal with that scene again. We just make another save. Always worth it. Click, clack, click, clack, the tippy, tippy, tick, tock. Also, if this game does have alternate endings, which I'm still on the fence on, whether or not it's going to have one, so far there hasn't been anything that seems like it would branch off into another ending, so I still don't know if that's going to end up being the case. Nothing of interest here except for a door that doesn't open. Cool. Anyway, we sent Felipe upstairs, so... Should I check my room first? I'm going to check my room first. The least possible thing to happen will be in my room probably so unless he's in here trying to sniff my pantalones mis panties that's locked okay i also didn't know that that was locked that's a new piece of information i did not have before all right we're back in this hall so this does lead back out in the main yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay okay just making sure all right, let me check this room first. Huh. OK, 
Okay, so that door was locked before as well. I guess we'll go back this way. Yo, Felipe. Donde? Okay, wait. This has the same... It had the thing on it before, too, didn't it? Nancy. That's my mom's room. Wait, okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did I go in here before? No, I don't remember. Oh, shice. Why is that happening? No, nope, don't care for that. I definitely did not come in here before. Dead body in all, here of all places. One of the lodgers. Whew, what a stink. Oh, cool. I'm glad we could fuck with a goddamn ghost. Cool. I'm glad we aggroed a ghost in my house. I love it. Can't wait to have it chase me around the house. Gonna be awesome. Also, what the hell? What the hell? Cool. There's another painting stuck under the first one. Okay. Maybe this tells you what time you need the clock to be in the other room like maybe that tells you it needs to be midnight or not midnight 12 30 12 15 jesus i know how to tell time if the hand sticking up is 12 12 15 if that's the little hand oh might be this clock actually oh, i need winding keys though okay so i need winding keys for that Yeah, I'm just going to double check this whole freaking room for things. <sighs> Computer on the desk. I wish I had one too. Do 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 do. Do 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 yeah, that time on that clock matters for sure. Also, did I notice I could go behind the bed last time? I don't think I did see that. Interesting. Glad I opened and let out the freaking ghost. Leave me alone, ghost. Ah. All right, there's one more door I haven't checked. I don't know if Ghosty chased me out here or not, but whatever. I didn't check this door over here. Is this one going to be open? Wait, this is Philip's room. Bruh. But Philip's here. Why can't he be in his room? Oh my god. So what the hell am I supposed to do? Now I feel like I gotta make the rounds again. Are they gonna keep this part of Clock Tower, which is like the worst part about it? Where you have to like aggro something in one room. And then come back and check other rooms again after you just check them. Because that's the worst aspect of the previous games. It really is. It's 100% the worst. I can feel like I gotta go back to Grandpa's room. Oh, should I go back here again? Oh, that's blocked. That's not a hole anymore. Never mind. So all I've done so far is I aggroed the fucking ghost lady. I don't have anything for her. I got nothing for your bitch ass lady. I still have the master key and that green heart thing I picked up though. Which is kind of interesting if you think about it. Didn't I pick those up in the dream world? Why do I still have them? I don't know. Can I go out the front door? I didn't check that. No need to go outside, she says. There might be a need. You're not even going to try? Still can't believe she says nothing of interest to these doors. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, so those door that door's locked, the other one's no interest. Alright. Go back to the grandpa room area. 
Maybe there's something on this desk back here now. No. Hmm. The keys lie behind you. Maybe the answer is in here and I just missed it. I need the keys. Maybe it's the winding keys. Like behind the chair? I'm about to read the clue again. Or maybe it's behind his fucking painting? Ah! There we go. The keys lie behind you, as in behind you, he wrote the note to himself. Okay, got it. Noted. Understood. We're good. I know what to do now. We got the keys. We're good. Let's go set up the clock. We good. Gonna dodge a ghost or motherfucking two. Haha, ha. bye bye. Alright, now that I have the keys, now we can make it 1215 or whatever. Here we go. Yes, use the winding keys indeed. Which key will you turn? Left. Uh, yeah, that's actually the right way. I don't know what the right one does, but I think if I can get it to be 1215 pretty easily, we're good. Pretty close. What if I turn the right one? We're going the other way. Oof, I almost nailed it. Did you see that? I was so close. One forward, one back, and then one more forward, I hope. Man, missed it barely. I think we'll get it eventually if I just keep doing this. Two back, one forward. When do I get the shotgun? That might be an option. All right, so that's 12.15, but I don't know if I have the hands backwards or not. Let's see. I'm assuming it didn't click. So maybe I have, maybe it has to be like 3 a.m. Maybe I have the hands backwards. I might have the hands backwards. Let's just, let's just assume I do. Assume the tall hand has to be pointing up and we're going right now. But yeah, I don't know. There, maybe there'll be a shotgun later in the game, FML. Clock Tower 2 had guns. Clock Tower 1 had guns, actually. Well, no. Wait, did it? I don't remember. <laughs> Damn it. Missed it barely. It'll line up eventually. There. Okay. So, tall hand had to go up. Got it. Just had the hands backwards. Unsurprisingly. The picture wasn't that clear. Which one was the long hand? Which one was the short hand? But anyway, we did it. Puzzle solving champion. And now we're in a creepy study. There are all kinds of books about witchcraft and hexes. Oh, boy. Strange medicine bottle stand in a line. Oh, boy. This room seems weirdly empty. It's fine. Let's just take a look at the book. You know, reading Rainbow this shit. 
Portal squares. Okay. Drawing the portal square as instructed is only the beginning. Remember, the portal square must be thoroughly purified with holy water until it has been sufficiently charged with energy for full effect. Only when the square is infused with light may the pr practitioner expect any br groundbreaking results. Okay. Gotta purify it with holy water. Noted. I have that ability, but what square are we talking about? The one on the ground here? Yep, that's the one. Now what? What is the strange pattern on the ground? What on earth was Mummy doing here? She was teleporting, duh. Oh, it takes two spats of holy water to activate the teleport. Don't mind me. Wow. Magical powers. Magical eagle teleportation powers. Is this going to take us to the next part of the game? Or... Oh boy. We're in a freight transport area? Oh boy. Take a look at the map. Where are we at now? Oh boy. I have no idea where I am on this map, by the way. No fucking clue where I am. There is a shiny on the ground. It's more lab in there, what are for my shit? Alright, so, question then is gonna... Uh, the, we beg the question then, what will the next killer be? What shall they be? Large container, it's been left outside and is corroded. You got it. I'm assuming the teleport does not reset. Oh, I can probably just go back. Okay, that's good to know, actually. I hope there's a refill coming around here. Next killer's probably Jack the Ripper. I mean, I suppose it could be. I don't know if this is the right time frame, time period, rather, for him, for Jack the Ripper to show up, though. Hey, it's the Fountain of the Lion. There we go. Exactly what I need to refill my shit and save it. Good stuff. Good, because I don't want to have to do the clock thing again. I'm kind of glad I found a save right away. That makes me feel good about it. The next kill is your mom. Oh, shit, Steve. Shot to the heart, bro. Also, what's up, man? How you doing? Welcome in. Jack the Ripper's immortal? What? Since when? He was until the day he died. He thought he was immortal. Very you. All right. Trash can? There's a crumpled up newspaper article in the corner. Read it. His legacy never died? Well, sure, but he's dead. It's like, heroes get remembered, but legends never die. All right, anyway, the family tragedy. Mother and son in acid bath shocker. Acid bath? Oh, boy. 23 November 1963, Crawley, West Sussex. Two decomposed corpses were found in a house in Russell Street on Tuesday. The victims were Dorothy Rand, 65, and her toy maker son, Albert Rand, 34. They were found in a drum filled with acid in the garage adjoining their house. Wow. Wow. The suspects believed to have escaped with a sum of money after the grisly crime. Albert Rand lived together with his mother, a widow, who was certified blind and required assistance in everyday tasks. Mr. Rand's eyes had been gouged out prior to his murder, and the police profiles, profilers are on the trail of the man who committed such a monstrous crime. Police are seeking the whereabouts of a young man who had been staying with the Rands a few days before the murder. Claiming to be a distant relative of Mrs. Rand, he arrived suddenly in the area and has since disappeared. Sus... Very sus. The susest, in fact. Alright. Well, we know about the murderer. He likes to drown people and gouge out their eyes. Well, not drown them, but throw their body in acid. But he likes to gouge out their eyeballs. That's cool. Where the heck am I going, though? Is there a door around here? Hold up. Let me look at the map again. So yeah, I'm in this fountain area. That I'm in the I'm in the right side area here. Okay, so there should be an opening like on this wall over here. Somewhere.
Or there's just a path. Oh, hello, ghost. Please don't hurt me. I'm just, I'm your friend. Here's your teddy bear that you lost. Teddy bear. Where do I have to replace your teddy bear? I will take it to the ends of the earth so you don't attack me. Please don't attack me. I can hardly bear to look. Oh my god, there's a heart-shaped pin in his hand. Are you serious? Don't pun me right now. If you pun me, I will punch you. So Wait, really? Really? Not the bear? But he can hardly bear it. That's such a fucking pun move to do that and then not actually be where I need to go. Oh, there's another ghost over here anyways. Heart-shaped pendant, though. Okay, so we probably need the other half of the locket or whatever. This guy's probably the bear guy. Where do I have to put your bear, sir? In the trunk? Inside of this car is scorched and black and a crushed box in the present of, of a teddy bear. That's what it is. I present thee a teddy bear. Sha -na -na -na. You have been saved. And for victory, another sigil stone. All right. Oh, the sigil stone saves your life one time. I forgot about that. That's why I didn't die sometimes when I was fighting the axe guy or the hammer guy rather he only didn't kill me because I he hit that and not me that makes sense alright cool anyway we need to find a heart shaped pendant but otherwise let the games begin new killer I wonder who it's gonna look like or what it's gonna look like or I don't know what I'm saying open Nope. Other side. Dark Souls door, as we like to call it. Uh? Oh. Oh? It's the bell, man. Is he a killer? God, this game's so dark. I can't see shit. What are you doing here? Answer me! What's that? What's that? What's going on? Oh, he's blind as shit. His eyes are gone. Oh, this is probably the dude that got his eyes gouged out. Okay. Where have you got to? Say something. Poor guy. Oh, no. These scenes feel very Silent Hillish, by the way. Like a lot of them do. I would say it's not quite as esoteric and weird as Silent Hill's cutscenes are. We were like, what the fuck did any of that even mean? Because I feel like that happens a lot with Silent Hill. You watch a scene, and you're like, what the hell just even happened? Like, where did that didn't connect to anything I was already doing? But at least in this game, it's just like it's setting up the next story. But the cutscene still feels like a Silent Hill cutscene. Is all I'm trying to say. so dark though can't see shit is this the mother crying mother Help. oh damn Where you got to? I've been waiting for you waiting waiting Alberto where art thou Shit's pretty grim. It definitely is FML, but hey, it's a horror game. It's supposed to be. Oh my god. Who the frick set off the goddamn poltergeist? Jesus. Holy crap. What is going on? <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, do I want to go back in there? Probably not. Not with a freaking poltergeist going ape shit. No thanks. Pass. Uh, um, 
Just a lonely cart. Oh boy. Okay. I love ghosts. They're my favorite. Bye. That door's locked and will not open. Did you know? <sighs> Nothing on that shit. Uh, cool, cool. Okay, anything in this room? We found a vase that holds a moonflower. Looks like it's been turned. Turn it? Sure. East or west or north? I have no idea. I have no context for this. I'm going to turn it all the directions because I have no idea. That was a trial and error. That was a trial and error puzzle if I ever seen one. This is way scarier than anything Resident Evil 4 had. Resident Evil 4 wasn't really a scary game, though. That game is a run for your life type of game. So it's not really a scary game, if that makes sense. Looks like a toolbox that's locked. Okay, so we need a toolbox key. Noted. And we can read Albert's Diary. 13 November. Percy from the bakery gave me the name of a good optometrist in London. It's been seven years now since Mum lost her sight. And though she tries to appear cheerful, it's difficult to watch her grow old. Perhaps the doctor can do something to help her. It will be expensive. I wonder if my savings will be enough. 16 November. Yesterday, a relative of ours named... Name of John Haig. Hi? 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 I don't know. John Haig. We'll call him Haig. John Haig came asking if he could stay with us. He was very cordial, but I can't help thinking there's something calculated about him. I said as much to Mother, who scolded me for judging a book by its cover. I suppose she's right. Blood is thicker than water, as they say. I've been hearing strange noises late at night for the last three days or so. I hear that a team of burglars have been striking homes in the area. I must remember to lock all the doors and windows at night. Okay. And then he died. Sad story. Should I go back out there and look around? Let me look at the map real quick. Yeah, on this floor. Okay, so the, the top of the stairs didn't go anywhere else. This is the only room up here. So let's just check this ladder that went down. I also wonder if I should wait for my panic to run out. You know, my panic bar to go back to zero. I probably should. It won't take long, right? Just give it a minute. It'll be it'll be back to zero before you know it. Just take a calm woo-saw moment in the bedroom and we're good. This is it's scary if you're afraid of babysitting, maybe? Oh, you mean Resident Evil 4. Well, that's what I'm saying. Resident Evil 4 is more about the frantic getting chased by a hell of fuck tons of enemies. Like, it's not really scary, jump scary, or, like, atmosphere scary. It's more about, oh, shit, I'm getting overrun by zombies right now. I need to do something. Also, what the hell? Also, my controller is going ape shit on the vibration. Jesus. I'm so glad I bought a new controller for this PS2 run I'm doing right now. I look forward to playing more PS2 games now that I have a better controller. It doesn't feel like such a fucking, like, task. Oh, God, there's a ghost here. Ay, ay, ay. Fire extinguishers? Of course they did. We found a kitchen key. Dope. You're going to skip Resident Evil 5 and 6 because of the cringe? But those games are actually fun to play. Well, 5 is. 6 is a little less so, I will say. But if you can find somebody to play Resident Evil 5 with you, FML, you can have a good time with that game. Half Heart Pendant. Okay, that's for the guy outside, the hand in the dumpster outside. Furniture looks ancient. And this is probably the door that opens from the other side on the first floor. Totes is. Awesome. Oh god, the ghost is still chasing me. Okay. What? I can't go back outside? Oh man. Okay. I guess we'll deal with the Heart Pendant ghost later. Um, I have a kitchen key. This door is probably still going ape shit. Did we check this door? Kitchen key? No. Okay. Oh, painting has been hung here. It's all crooked, though. Maybe I should straighten it. Do it. Okay. Apparently, you can't straighten it unless you have something, I'm assuming. Maybe you need a specific item to help you straighten it. Here's the kitchen key. Here we go. Here we go. Allegory volunteered to be your, your your partner on Resident Evil 5. I mean, if you just want someone to play with, I mean, Allegory is going to carry you through that shit. He's played that game many, many times. 
But if you want somebody who hasn't played it, that may, might be harder to come by. But yeah, you know, there's always other people around that have, haven't played it. Shit, maybe you can get Dragon to play it with you. Just because you guys are BFFs, right? Alright. Welcome to the kitchen. Plates in a row. Oh god, the ghost is still chasing us. Oh, there's a body. I was going to say, there's shiny things on the ground, but there's also a body. News reporter's memo. Found V important? Found V important clue to Rand's murder. I guess very. We'll go back to house and investigate and gather info. Got a feeling about this. It will be the biggest scoop in Fleet Street. Oh, well, now you're dead. Maybe it's... Maybe it's, uh... What's his face? <laughs> the demon barber of Fleet Street. Fucking God, I'm blanking on his name. Why? Sweeney Todd. Maybe it's Sweeney Todd's the killer. <laughs> the way he was backseat gaming, he acts like he'd play the shit. No, he'd play five, he'd play Resident Evil Five all day long. Like he he'd play any Resident Evil. He's a Resident Evil fanatic, like like Morrow is. Anyway, a newspaper clipping sandwich between the pages of the notepad. Serial killer Haig meets Grizzly End. 11 May 1962, West Sussex. John Haig, the serial killer on the run since early last year, has been found dead at a metal plating works. Haig is held responsible for the cold-blooded murder of several pensioners whom he robbed before placing the bodies in a container of sulfuric acid, thus disposing of the evidence. The acid used in the crimes was stolen, leading the police to place the factories in the area with stocks of sulfuric acid under surveillance. The suspect appeared at a plating factory in Horsham, and a struggle ensued. Haig lost his balance and fell from the platform into a vat of acid, ironically meeting the same end as his victims. Wow. So he fell in the acid and died? What is he, fucking Joker from... Well, that's how he became the Joker in the original Batman movie. Well, the, the first Tim Burton Batman movie, I should say. But yeah. Oh, you mean Dragon was backseat gaming, being like, use the herb, blah, blah, blah. Oh. Well, Dragon's never played fucking Resident Evil anything. You don't have to listen to him on any Resident Evil anything if you don't want to. But he, I feel like he would play Resident Evil 5 with you just because it's co-op and it's fun to play. But you don't have to listen to his knowledge on any of that shit because he doesn't know. He don't know shit about Resident Evil. Are you kidding me? He can act like he knows this and that and the other thing, but he knows he don't know shit. And he doesn't care. He would just be like, I don't give a shit. I hate these games anyways. So don't listen to him. He's Jon Snow on the subject. He ain't no shit. Oh, fuck. We're back outside. Dope. Oh, that... Wait, what? Oh, this is a different door that I came out. Okay. Anyway, we have the heart-shaped pendant. Let's put this away. Kind of tempted to... Maybe go save it. And maybe call this a night for tonight. I think I might do that, actually. Because if I would have started the, you know, the 40 minutes earlier like I wanted, I would have probably already stopped, but... An extra invisibility band won't hurt, especially since I haven't even tried it out yet. But anyway, um, what other objects have I picked up so far? I probably missed something in the house. I need to explore more. But I'm going to go back to the lion statue. This is right over here. And I think this is where we're going to call it for tonight. Well, we're going to get a cutscene first. Never mind. Hold on. Hold on. Who the hell are you? Mom? Oh, is it her mom? Mom? Well, that's going to be a tease for next time. Oh, shit, there's a shiny. I'm picking that up. Well, I'm picking that up for sure. Your mom is gone, woman. But she left behind Dick's desk key. Yo! Now we know why we need to teleport back. Okay. That's a tease for next time for sure. So just remember, Funky, next time you play this game, you need to teleport back to the house and use that key. But yeah, that's where we're going to stop. So next time on Clock Tower 3, we'll uh, teleport back to the house and use that key. Because I was thinking, like, I don't have anything else to do now. Unless I missed some exploration in the house, which I would have went back to do for sure. But I was just thinking, like, I didn't have any other keys. Now I do. 
So yeah, next time we'll do that. Hope you're enjoying so far. This game is definitely way more playable and enjoyable than the previous two games, really. So at least I will have the gumption and desire to get through it, and we're going to make that happen. So hopefully I'll see you guys all in the next session. And until then, peace out, everybody.